Hi, this is CBRadioMagazine.com. This is the MFJ828 digital SWR watt meter. This is a compact watt meter that can show the frequency that you're transmitting on, your SWR, and your forward and reflected wattage. Has a actual mechanical analog meter here, your digital display over here. It's got a couple buttons for some different options I'll go through and explain. Um, has some other interesting options on the back of it I'll show as well. This meter uh, is going to be around the $230 price range, so it's definitely a little step up from some of your average $100 meters uh, in terms of functions and what it's showing and doing, but uh, being as it's digital, a little bit more going on. Um, so I'm going to turn the power off here just to show you. Uh, the meter does require a 12-volt power source. comes with the wire. Uh, it's just a negative positive wire that plugs in the back so you will need to hook that up to a power supply or you're going to have to find yourself uh, an adapter that will work uh, for to plugging directly into AC. So we turn the power on and you'll see the light. This is a lit display over here so it does have a backlight on it. lights up very well and you'll see our digital display over here. And First of all, we've got our megahertz. So it's going to display your megahertz here, uh, your transmitting frequency. Five-digit display, so if you're trying to uh, set up a radio for sideband or something, this isn't the type of frequency counter you're going to use for that. This is uh, basically just show you where you're transmitting, give you an idea. It's good for older units uh, where it's not going to you know, tell you necessarily on the unit itself. Um, so if you're off frequency or something, this would let you know. It has a little A here. Uh, that means that this is going to be showing your average uh, power, and you can adjust it for the peak options here. If you press this peak button, you'll see it goes to a 1, and that means it's going to do a hold for 1 second, 2 seconds, or a 3 second hold time. Over here is your SWR. It'll read it out, and it's got three positions. It's got forward power here and reflected power here. The power button is down here on the right-hand side. There's a mode control over here on the left-hand side. The mode uh, will take you through a couple of different display modes. So you can display, do a display mode where it shows megahertz SWR, and it has forward and reflected shown on a bar graph, and there's a scale here, and it shows uh, your power output on your uh, peaks over here. And there's another option where it's going to show uh, three bars here. Oh, sorry, there we go. And this one would show your SWR forward and reflected. And then we're back to our other uh, menu here. So uh, definitely some interesting uh, options for display. Uh, this one's probably the one that people are going to use the most often. Um, just because it uh, shows all the information and it's uh, fairly easy to read. Uh, once again, your peak button here is going to change your average or one, two, three second peak hold times. This is your alarm option. That means the alarm's off with two beeps. The alarm on is one beep. Now, what's the alarm? The alarm is for your SWR. If your SWR goes over a certain uh, value, so you can set it up to go, uh, if it goes over 2.0, then it will sound the alarm and the red light here will light up. You can go into the mode, hold this in, and it'll take you into these options. So right now the meter's set up to auto range. The alarm can be set so we can set it to 1.5 or we can set it up to a 3 and anything in between. So we can set it at a 2 here. And the beep is on. That's the beep you hear when we're changing our function or pushing the buttons. And now we're back to our main menu. Now when it says it's auto ranging on the, the watt meter, that means basically this watt meter will measure in three different ranges. Um, so when you're going to measure your SWR, it can do it in a 25, a 250 watt, or a 1500 watt range. It'll measure the incoming uh, signal and it will calibrate automatically and set it up for the range that it feels is coming into the meter. So um, right now we're using a radio that's in uh, doing a 10 watt dead key. Um, we're not going to do any modulation, and so uh, with the AM dead key of 10 watts around that, we should the meter should auto calibrate and put us on the 25 watt scale. If we started uh, modulating and go up into the 40 watt range uh, with this radio, then it's going to jump us up uh, probably into the 250 watt. So uh, that's how it works for the auto ranging. So let's key up, and I'll show you how this works. Um, 
Once again, we've got a RCA 2950DX. It's doing just about 10 watts. And uh, we're going to key up and do a dead key and see how this works. Okay. So you'll see <coughs> here, it's showing us that we're on 27.385 megahertz. And uh, it's currently showing us average output. This is a uh, 1.24 SWR, and this is a dipole that we made the other day uh, out there for fun, and we actually just raised it up. It was showing a 1.5 on one of our other meters we were testing the other day, so doing a little better up in the air there. We could probably tune it up a little better even than that. Forward power, we're showing uh, 8.4 watts of forward power. And reflected, we're showing 0.1 watts. So overall, it looks like our system's working fairly well, and uh, it's showing us our uh, output wattage and everything. And I will show you um, a different scale here. Okay, so uh, here's a scale. Okay, it's showing us uh, we're at 1.24 uh, uh, SWR again, and it's showing us the 8.4 watts. And it's showing this on a uh, 10 watt scale here. And so that you have to divide this when you're doing it in the 25 watt range and the auto ranging, depending on the amount of power you're doing. So the top uh, bar here is our forward and this little bar here is our reflected. So once again, just another way to view it. Here, um, it's gonna just show our uh, SWR right here. So it's showing SWR here, uh, a numerical value. It's showing it on a bar graph here on this uh, uh, scale down below showing our wattage and once again our frequency and <clears throat> on this bar graph you can see it shows our SWR up top here on a bar graph our forward wattage and our reflected wattage all on a bar graph so there we go so that's really what this meter uh, is all about in terms of what the functions it'll do um, in terms of accuracy, it's pretty close on to what we've seen on the other meters. Um, we can show you the peak option now. Actually, let me show you that. So we've got it on average. We'll set it up to a three-second delay uh, on the peak or three-second hold uh, on the peak output. So uh, currently we're at a 8.4-watt uh, dead key we know for the radio. Let me turn on the uh, microphone gain up here. Audio. And so what we're seeing there, and often um, megahertz isn't going to show correctly when you're doing modulation or in sideband mode as well. So uh, this is really just for an AM carrier uh, measurement when you're trying to figure out what your frequency is. Uh, as you can see, our SWR uh, 1.26 at one point uh, forward was uh, 45.1 watts and reflect was 1 watt. So uh, once again, it's showing us our peak reading there. And uh, that's how it would show up uh, on the meter when we're using our radio. When we're talking, uh, you can set up for the peak so you can find out what your peak output is. Um, over on the analog, we'll talk about that real quick. So uh, on the analog, what that does is it's got a forward and reflect. So it shows your forward power, reflected power on these two scales, and it's a cross needle. And where they meet uh, in the middle, uh, when these two... Uh, needles meet, if you're looking at these red lines, that's your SWR on the inside there. Um, so what you want is you want uh, one meter to go up here, obviously for your forward output to be good, and your reflect, you want that uh, scale to be very low over here, and what that would mean is you'll see that your SWR is low and your reflected wattage would be low because they correspond. So let's see if we uh, do a 10 watt dead key here. Let's see here. So it, uh, there we go. So it auto ranged the scale. Right now it's uh, on the 10 watt scale. So it's showing about a 8 watt dead key. I think that's what it showed uh, 8.3 watts here on our forward. And as you can see on our reflected, it's uh, crossing just above the 1.1, maybe a little hard to see on the camera here. And the reflected wattage is down below uh, 1 watt. So obviously this is where you'd like to see it for your antenna and radio. And the analog meter seems to match up uh, fairly closely with what we're seeing here on the digital meter. So overall, um, it seems to work very well in that particular uh, instance in terms of measuring your SWR, showing your forward and reflected power. Um, if you're just doing a dead key for the most part, it should give you an accurate reading here. I've uh, kind of found that this meter doesn't like uh, to do lower wattages. That's one thing. Um, if we turn the uh, radio down here in terms of output, let me turn off microphone gain, and let me turn this back to just average. 
And if I turn my wattage down to uh, like a 0.5 watt, it, do it doesn't uh, get a reading on this meter. So uh, the meter doesn't like low wattage ranges. So if you're looking for a meter to measure, you know, your one watt carrier or whatever out of your radio, um, I probably wouldn't pick this one in that particular instance because it doesn't seem to range very well for low power input. Uh, it tends to do fine when you get it up uh, or, you know, around 5 to 10 watts uh, for the dead key or going up above that, no problem whatsoever, but in low value it doesn't tend to want to pick up the reading and uh, it may just need a calibration adjustment to pick up some of those lower wattage outputs. Um, but, you know, for uh, people who are trying to do set your radios for, you know, half a watt output, this probably wouldn't be the best meter for that. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the back. I'll show you a couple of different uh, neat options on the back of this one. So this is the back of the unit. And over here we've got our power input. The uh, power input is going to be just a standard little uh, DC plug. And as you can see, this is the one that comes with it with the positive and negative wires that you have to hook up to your power supply. Um, that's to make the light go on and everything work. Uh, it has a serial port here so you can actually connect it to your computer and download the latest firmware and update the, the unit with firmware. It's got an amp uh, in and out uh, outputs so that this is set up uh, with the relay and stuff so that you can set your amp up. If the alarm goes off it shuts down uh, your amp so you don't uh, key your amp into a high SWR. An interesting feature for that. The ground here for the case, and then of course your antenna in, and uh, or, you know your hookups for your antenna and your transmitter, transmitter coming in, antenna coming out. So uh, got some neat features on it. Uh, definitely some of the uh, ham radio uh, guys are going to be more interested in some of the amp uh, hookups, but for those of you that are using those types of systems, definitely a neat feature to be able to hook it up that way and have it shut down if there's an issue. All right, so this is the uh, inside of the uh, MFJ828 watt meter and as you can see it's using uh, some surface mount technology on some of the parts there. You'll see at the back uh, this is your transmitter input antenna output here and uh, you have some of your relay switches here uh, your power coming in and uh, down below here's your serial port to connect to it so you can update the firmware. You flip it around here all right, so here's your front uh, circuit board that runs your display. It's got some ribbon cable running down to the board there. Push buttons going directly into the board. Uh, over here is going to be your mechanical meter. And of course, it's wired there, and the lamp's uh, power wired for those as well. Um, so very uh, nice, clean layout in here. Uh, not a whole lot to go wrong in terms of the board. Um, one thing I did notice with these is that uh, if you are running a uh, splattering station, uh, you know, loud over modulated station, uh, or you've got some uh, amplifier boxes or something you're using that are uh, kind of splattery, you will want to make sure you run a low pass in front of this. Uh, I found that if you had uh, a whole lot of uh, harmonics going on, that the output uh, uh, wattage readings are going to be a little bit skewed. They're going to read some of the harmonics, just like mini meters will. Um, these ones are a little more sensitive, I think, because of the digital uh, setup on them. So if you are going to use these to measure your output wattage, make sure you stick a low-pass filter in front, and uh, that way uh, it'll give you a more realistic reading. Uh, I found with the low-pass in front, really made sure that the, the readings were much more accurate uh, on, on radios that we uh, tested here that were, you know, we knew were a little bit more of a splattering type radio. So that's the inside of the MFJ828. So overall, to summarize, uh, it's a pretty neat unit, the fact that it offers both the analog and the digital readout. Uh, it's got the frequency counter built in to show you your frequency. Um, the alarm is an interesting feature for that. The fact that you can update it with newer firmware, if they have a bug or it needs a fix, they can do that. Um, the uh, options for the different readouts, some guys are really going to like the bar graphs, I guess. Uh, definitely has the neat uh, SWR frequency forward and reflect showing all at the same time. The uh, Meter overall seems to be well built, um, seems to work fine for everything I was doing here. Uh, my only complaints really would be on the low power. It uh, didn't read uh, some of the lower wattage inputs. They just went to you know, key the, the unit and get it to read the, the low input. But uh, otherwise it was fairly functional on everything. For most people I think it will be accurate enough to show them what they want to know. 
Um, once again, this is the MFJ828 made by MFJ. Um, you know, their company makes a lot of other products as well. Some of the other digital things, they make some meters that are just the analog cross meter. Um, I did like the fact on this unit that the cross needle and the digital meter seem to correspond fairly well. Uh, sometimes when they start mixing this kind of stuff, the, you know, one meter is going to show something else and the digital is going to show something else uh, from it. So nice to see those two working fairly well together. And uh, overall, very neat unit and uh, compact as well. So it doesn't take up a whole lot of room on the desk.